What's up guys, Dark Dally here, and today I want to do a little kind of tutorial thing on installing Fallout 4 Place Everywhere for the PC. Now, I haven't uploaded in a while. Those of you who watched my channel may be like, hey Dark Dally, where are your videos? I've had some problems with some video editors recently, and so because of that, hopefully I won't have to edit this. I, I want to get a video out there, I want to do this, and so this is what we're doing today. So today's video is how to use, let's go ahead and pull up, I have a window of it somewhere, here we go, how to use the place everywhere, or at least how to install it for, for PC for Fallout 4, because it, it's a little complicated, I mean slightly, because it wants you to install this and that, and then it has these configuration files for you to update and edit, and I'm a big Fallout 4 builder, of course, all my subscribers know I love to build in Fallout 4, it's what this channel was founded on, so let's get to it. Now, place everywhere for the PC, now, Right here, I have the page up on Nexus Mods. Place everywhere lets you basically place everything everywhere, regardless of any limits in or out of workshop, in the air, underground, whatever. Um, it lets you rotate things, scale things on any increment you want, and it has a whole set of hotkeys designed for that. And I'm going to try to go into this, or at least go into how to set it up. That's that's what this is about. So let's say you want this mod. Let's say, okay, I want this mod. Now, when you go down here to the files section, it's got a few files available. It's got, uh, oops, I guess I could have, I think I already have it. Yep, I already have a tab for that. Okay, so here's, here's the files. Here's the main one right here, and this is the one that you need. Now, these right here are different place INI files, and we'll get to that. The first thing you want to do is go ahead, you want to click download with this, and when you click download with this, it's going to pop up a thing that says, hey, you need Fallout 4 script extender for this. Now, I would recommend having the latest version of the game. I have the latest version of the game, so I can't say if you don't, which at this time, I believe is 1.9.4. Correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it is, but I have the most up-to-date version. So, I would click this right here, and this would download the script extender for me, which actually is still down here in my downloads, because I'm in Chrome, you can see it right here. That's shows that I've actually already downloaded it, so we're going to cancel out of this. So you would click that if you don't already have the script extender, and it would download that for you. Now, if you have it a different way or want to get it a different way, you can get the script extender through the silverlock.org page, and I'm not finding it. There is a link here for it, or you can just download it there. They're a very trusted group of people who've been doing script extenders for Bethesda games for years and years and years, so it's totally cool. I know sometimes it's kind of sketchy to download an executable, but trust me, that's totally fine. If you click that, that I had popped up when I clicked this, or go to the, boy, I should have been more prepared. I don't have the, uh, the, the page on me, but there is a link here in the description somewhere. You can just click on the downloads. When you, once you have that, just download that, and now what that's going to do it's going to give you, let's go ahead over, let me show you some of my, uh, say you just download, I just downloaded it to my downloads folder. Here's my downloads folder. You can see lots of fun Fallout 4 stuff. And there it is right there. So I downloaded this to my Fallout folder. And now I did go ahead, I, I, I clicked that, I downloaded this. Let's go back to the, let me, let me show you what I was doing here. I did click that. Because I, I do have the Nexus Mod Manager. I definitely recommend the Nexus Mod Manager. I clicked that. Then I clicked continue with my download, and that downloaded the actual mod place everywhere. Let's look at that just real quick. It's right here. But I didn't enable it yet. I downloaded it. I didn't want to enable it until I had the script extender. Now let's go back to the script extender. I had it in my downloads folder. It's right here. And here's what I did. You want do you do want to open it up with 7-Zip. I have other stupid retarded apps, but you want to open it up with 7-Zip, and this is what I did. I went here, I opened it up, all right? And then I opened another window with my Fallout 4, you know, destination folder, you know, which is actually my Fallout 4 folder. And this is probably pretty common for most people. This PC, C, Program Files, x86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Fallout 4. This is your Fallout 4 destination folder by default, right? Depending on, you know, whatever drive you have. And what I did was I just came here after I opened this from the, uh, from the, zip, from the archive. I just hit Control A to highlight it all, and then I just dragged it into here is what I did. I just drag all this into here. 
and it puts the fallout for script extender loader.exe, it puts it right in your folder, and then it puts all this other stuff in the appropriate folders in data and SRC. So that's how I installed the script extender. I hope that that was clear enough. I want to I don't want to spend too much time on this. That's that's how I did it. And I, I got that from another YouTube video and it worked for me just fine. Okay, so I did that. I drug all that shit out of the archive and it it uh, extracted it into my Fallout 4 destination folder. That was all easy and done. So let's put that away for now. Let's go back to here because you want to follow these instructions. Let's go down to the instructions. Okay, so installation folder. Right, right, we did that. We did that. Now that I got that drug in, I went ahead, I went to my Nexus Mod Manager, I clicked this, I clicked the little check mark button and enabled it. So now that's enabled. So what's the next step? The next step is once once the script extender is installed and your actual the actual mod we're talking about is enabled in your Nexus Mod Manager, now it wants you to make sure that the place.dll is located at your Fallout Destination folder slash data F4SE slash plugins. Let's go ahead and let's check that because that is something we need to know. So Fallout 4, data. Now, once you've installed the mod, it will be here. F4SE, plugins. There is a place dot DLL and there should well be. And then it says there's configuration file place dot INI. And I actually did not have that. Instead, I had, at least I had what it says here. I had a place.ini.example. So what I did was I just went ahead to this folder here, and I renamed it place.ini. And I actually have it over here on my other screen. I'll drag it over for you. This is the place.ini. I've made some modifications to it, and I will get to that. I will totally get to that. Okay, and then it says check that, uh, whoops, I think we already did that, there we go. And you're going to use that to configure, let's go ahead back to here, all of this stuff, all these hotkeys and, and modes like that, like say you want to be able to toggle place everywhere on or off and have access to these different hotkey options. I'm not going to go into exactly how to do that, but I'm going to kind of show if you're not familiar with editing INI files, okay? So as of this point, everything is installed. Let's go back to... Okay, downloads. Okay, so just to recap, I downloaded the script extender right here. I opened it with 7-zip. I opened this up, and then I just hit Control-A to highlight everything. I opened my Fallout 4 destination folder right here, and then I drug all of this stuff into here, and then it's automatically extracted it and put it right where it's supposed to go. So, you know, to be clear, we already did that. That was the script extender installation. We downloaded this mod, the Nexus Mod Manager, and installed it. And so we're technically good to go. We also renamed that place.ini file. What was that again? It was in data, F4SC, plugins. We renamed, I'm sorry, yeah, the INI, we renamed it because it was, it was for whatever reason. And we'll get to that. I'll get to how to, exactly how to do that. And then there's some optional files here. Now these are, now that I've covered what place.ini is, let me drag it back over here, place.ini, it basically sets your hotkeys and which hotkeys and which options you want to use. Now by default, all of these have, see a little semicolon right there? By default, all these have a semicolon in front of them, and it kind of briefly explains it up here. The semicolon comments stuff out. It means it's just comments, and it's not, it's not using it. In order to use it, if you want to like see here, I have all my hotkeys enabled because I've gone through and I've deleted the semicolon that was preceding these lines, now making the INI file use them. So if you're not really good with that, you can download right here. That's what these optional files are. They are like pre-configured place that INI files for you. And it kind of briefly explains, I downloaded this one. Uh, I'm still not exactly clear on what they are. I'm still figuring this out, guys, but I do have it working. And I downloaded this one here, toggleable, because I wanted to be able to toggle place everywhere on or off. Because I'm I'm a pretty uh, experienced builder. I like to build a lot. I like to build a lot of different things, and I want to have control over the things that I build. So I downloaded this one, and what it did was it downloaded another place ini. I just downloaded it to my download folder. I opened the the seven zip file, and I just drug it over and replaced my original place ini file. And so I have this. Let's make this a little bigger if I can. 
let's go ahead here. Let's make this a little bigger. Ah, forget it. Forget it. You guys can read it. Okay. So what I've done here is this is pretty much how it comes. I've changed a few things in here, but it'll come here. Instead of saying semicolon toggleable equals zero, which is how it comes default, this changes it. It takes away the semicolon, takes out the comment, and it says toggleable two. And what that does, now there is a handy help file here. I'm going to go to that right here. Let's go to the, I'm sorry. See this place I and I help? If you're not sure how to edit this, I might actually already have one open. Oh, I do already have one open. Okay. Let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, so here's the help file. This is in the same exact folder as you can see. Place I and I, I and I help. I should have shown this earlier. And what this does is you can just go through this line by line. Let's grab this and this and get them kind of side by side here. And you can see this says, okay, this defines all of the things, all of the variables or uh, you would want for each line and says what they do and what kind of parameter you want to put on them if you want to delete that semicolon and make them work. So that's kind of how that works. I hope this wasn't too complicated. It kind of feels like it was because it's kind of a complicated process, but not not really, guys. All right, so that's kind of my, my little guide to getting this installed. Now, now that we have all this installed, so we downloaded the script extender, right? We extracted it into the Fallout 4 destination folder. We used Nexus Mod Manager to install Place Everywhere. I went ahead and got my optional Place INI file. Now what do we do? Now we want to run Fallout 4. Let's go ahead and let's just get rid of all of this shit off my screen. Okay. Now what I did was I made a separate icon on my desktop because we want to run, now that we have the script extender, we want to run the game with the script extender. So I made a separate icon for it. Let me go ahead and pull up my Fallout 4 folder. Let's go to the Fallout 4 destination folder right here. After you install the script extender, it will add this file, F4SE underscore loader. That, from now on, once you have the script extender, that's what you will now launch your game with. So what I did was I created a link to this my desktop. I simply changed the name and the icon to make it look like Fallout. And now I know that here's my Fallout icon. And if I'm, you know, obviously I'm going to be running with this unless I decide to get rid of this mod. So let's just go ahead and click this and run the game. And this uh, skips all the, the loader crap and just takes you straight to the game. Like so. Now, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I want to say something because I'm not sure I'll be able to edit this. I've had problems with my editor, so <laughs> I'm like, shit, I don't want any, I don't want any dead space in my video. Okay, so we're just going to continue. We're going to go to my character. I was just working at uh, Starlight Drive-In. I was kind of experimenting with some of this, so we're just going to load this save back up. I just installed this game on this computer and this is a brand new computer with pretty much just this game if you were wondering why is his desktop and his icons and everything so sparse or you know whatever or if you weren't there's that brand new computer I only have two games on here Mass Effect 3 and Fallout 4 all right so here we are at the little place I was building I was kind of testing with this so now that we have this installed look I'm not an expert yet I've not mastered this yet I've just kind of been playing with it here as you can see but I wanted to do this tutorial on how to install it, not necessarily on how to use it. That can be something later. Whoops. Let's go ahead and we'll just hold V to go to the build menu. Now, again, you can set the toggle or not with the F8 button. I believe mine is on. Let's make sure. Let's hit F8. I'm not getting any kind of message. Let's try to build a wall. And you see it'll let us build it up there. Well, first, we'll have to build it on the ground. It's kind of from my experience, and now we can drag it up here. There we go. Yeah, so it's on, and because I set the, uh, I have the toggle on or off, the snapping toggle, this is kind of the effect of some of the stuff. You can see it when you change it in the INI file. I set it so I can toggle snap on and off. You can see right here, this is, this is a, a great example of how you can change things in the, in the INI file. See that's snapping? Let's go ahead and let's put this down. We don't want to have anything selected and I can press F1 to toggle the snap. See right there it says object snap off. Now we can grab this and it won't snap. Now we can put this literally anywhere we want. Now that said we could put it, let's go ahead and toggle back on, object snap is back on. We can grab this, it'll try to snap, but we can still place it anywhere we want. Don't get me wrong. We can still place it anywhere we want. 
but this is just an example of what some of those hotkeys will do. It will snap now, or we can hit F1, toggle snap off, and now it won't. And so now we can place, let's say we want to, you know, I've always wanted the option to turn place, I'm, I'm, I've always wanted the option to turn snap on or off, because as you guys know, my subscribers know, I came from PlayStation, where this was simply not an option. So now we can place these walls any angle we want, and they won't sit there and try to snap with one another, you know, various things like that. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get out of here. Quit the game. So that's my basic tutorial on how to install all this uh, stuff that comes with the Place Everywhere mod for the PC version of Fallout 4. Let's go back to the thing. This mod right here, there's some handy videos here in the description page that kind of give a brief overview of this. I hope this video was helpful, guys. Be sure to let me know in the description what you think. Hit the like button if you like it. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe for all my cool content that's always coming up. At least once I got my editing software straightened out. <laughs> all right, guys. My name is Dark Dally, and until next time, you guys take care, and I will see you all later.